Greetings, loved ones. Today, we're going to talk about how you can open the conversation with your children about the topic of domestic violence. Trust me, they actually know much more than you think. To help get these messages out, please subscribe to our channel, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, hit the like button and the notification bell, and share these messages with others. I want you to know that children, even young ones, are more aware of what's going on than you think. Even if you do your best to shield them from violence and your partner never abuses you in front of the kid, they know there's turmoil in the home. There's a natural tendency to minimize the fact that children are affected by domestic violence, says Becky McAllister Groves. She's the founding director of the Child Witness to Violence Project at Boston Medical Center. She says, young children are more aware than we as adults usually think they are. However, that doesn't mean they understand what is going on. Your first consideration, of course, should be safety. If you're able to leave safely with your children, that's the best option to protect yourself and them. If leaving isn't an option right now, reassure your children that you have their safety in mind. That means safety planning with older children and providing stability for younger ones. Safety and stability are the first steps toward helping children, but we also understand that for a variety of reasons, families do stay together. That's why it's critical to have a safety plan. Tell your children, if there's fighting and you don't feel safe, go to the neighbor's house or whatever you want to, the plan to be. It's a powerful way that as a parent, you can say, I am protecting you. The children of all ages, but especially the younger ones, try to provide as much stability as possible. Stick to your daily routines and bedtimes whenever possible. If a young child feels that there's some predictability in his world, that helps a lot. Also, try to find a way to spend extra time with the child and talk to the child in a soothing tone. These things in a non-verbal way really help stabilize children. So the question is, when is it time to talk? Talking about abuse is never comfortable and Grove says it can be particularly difficult to discuss the topic with your children. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't say anything. Because it's such a difficult topic to bring up she says, oftentimes it's simply avoided. <coughs> it's incredible. Then you've got this elephant in the room problem and it can really create a kind of wedge between the child and the parent. So that's when we start to see behavioral issues in children. Grove says that behavioral issues are often children trying to express themselves without having the opportunity or know how to do so verbally. Instead, they act out via tantrums, defiance, and aggressive behavior. So it's important that establishing open communication and being available to listen and answer questions is the best way to help your children deal with what's going on. So here are eight tips from the National Child Traumatic Stress Network for discussing violence with your children. Number one, take the lead. Don't wait for children to come to you. They're likely scared and uncomfortable to bring the topic up with you. Number two, start with a message of support. Try something like, I care about you and I will listen to you. Number three, find out what they know or what they think they know. Ask your children what they've seen or what they understand about what's been happening at home. Four, show support. Acknowledge your children's feelings and their versions of events, which may not line up with what actually happened. And five, Tell them it's not their fault. Children are naturally self-centered and are likely to think that they are the reason for the violence. So assure them that they are not at fault. Number six, tell them that violence is not okay. It may feel hypocritical, hypocritical to say, but it's still an important to get the message across. Violence is not okay. Number seven, try to stay calm. Speaking confidently conveys a sense of security. If your children ask something you're not comfortable answering right then, tell them it's an important question and you need some time to think before you can answer. But most importantly, make sure you do get back to them. And number eight, don't put any burden on them. Rely on other adults for support and avoid placing stress or worry on your children by discussing relationship or custody issues with them. It's okay to ask for help. If you're still uncomfortable talking to your children about domestic violence, don't be too hard on yourself. 
I would never want anybody to think that a parent should automatically know what to say, Gross says. She says, this is why I think the role of external support, whether it's an advocate, a neighbor, a friend, or therapist, someone who can really help the non-abusing parent think through what they want to say to the child. She says, this is so important. Groves also advocates for getting professional help from a child therapist anytime you are concerned about your child's mental and emotional well-being. She says, if your child's behaviors are significantly interfering with their ability to function at school or at home, if there's aggression that feels unsafe or uncontainable, if an older child gives any hint of self-harm, harm, these are clear indications that the child needs outside help, she says. Parents should not hesitate to seek support if they are worried about their child. With one in three women and more than 275 million children experiencing domestic violence worldwide, the question is not if you will encounter a victim of violence. The question before God is what will you do when you do encounter them? You could be a person who saves a life. You are called. We are all called to be champions for justice and those who suffer violence need to know that those who love them and even those who don't even know them will step out and reach out to them to give them the help and the courage they need to leave before it's too late. Help us get these messages out so those who are suffering can identify their suffering and identify ways that they can get to safety. Or if you're not a victim of violence, that you can recognize somebody who's suffering and know how to help them. That's why it's so important for you to subscribe to our channel, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Hit that like button and the notice bell and share these messages with others because you never know just by doing so you could save a life. We want you to know that everything that you have heard, everything that you have been told, if you've been told you know, by your abuser that you're no good or whatever, I want you to know these are all lies meant to control and dominate you. The truth is you are valued, you are loved, you are intelligent, you are beautiful and God does not want you to suffer violence. He wants you to live free from violence in peace and tranquility. There is a way out. It's not your fault and abuse is not love. Somebody who says they love you and then they abuses you, that's, they're lying to you. And if you're a victim of violence, so please reach out to somebody. If you find yourself in a dangerous situation, call 911 for help. Tomorrow, we're gonna talk about the deadly cycle of abuse. And until then, God bless you.